It may be the most commonly used painkiller in Canada, but an average 68 deaths per year in this country are caused by acetaminophen. Joining us now for more on what we need to know, here's Jennifer Yang, health reporter with the Toronto Star. Nice to have you here. Nice to be here. First time in the studio. It is. It's lovely very to lovely. have you here. <laughs> acetaminophen essentially is what? Tylenol. That's what most people associate it with. So it's Tylenol, any other brand names we should be aware of? Well, what people don't realize is that acetaminophen is in more than 480 products sold in Canada. Hmm. So therein lies the problem. Because? Because people will basically take too much acetaminophen without realizing it. Um, hmm. And this is easier done than you would think. For instance, say hmm. you have a cold and you're taking extra strength Tylenol and you take up to the max that you, they suggest you do in a day, which is eight. If at the end of the day you drink a neocitrin, you've already gone over the daily limit. Because there's acetaminophen in that. Because there's acetaminophen in neocitrin. And people don't know that. Exactly. And then say you take a NyQuil too to help you sleep, and then you've really gone over the limit. And you're sick for a week, and you do this day by day, you can get into some real serious trouble. And you can't figure out why you're getting sicker when you're taking all this good medicine. Exactly. Hmm. Do you need a prescription to get acetaminophen? You don't. And in fact, there's also acetaminophen combined with codeine called Tylenol-1, um, or the generic versions of this drug, which you also don't need a prescription to buy in Canada. Hmm. How is it possible that 68 people a year are dying from this? Well, some of those are intentional deaths for sure. Um, Tylenol and acetaminophen tend to be something people reach for when they're suicidal or intentionally wanting to overdose. But coroners have found that nearly half of these deaths are unintentional. So they are people who are accidentally what we call double dipping acetaminophen by combining all sorts of products and not realizing that they all contain acetaminophen and thereby blowing the limit. Or they are people who are more susceptible to overdose. And this is something that isn't widely known either, is that people who are alcoholics, have liver problems, who might be malnourished, um, are more susceptible to overdosing on acetaminophen. So if you overdose on acetaminophen, you are gonna, is it liver damage that you will die of? Live, the liver is the organ that gets really hit hard. Um, there is actually an antidote, and if you take the antidote quickly after you overdose, you have a pretty good shot at surviving. But the interesting thing is, people who accidentally overdose on acetaminophen tend to have poorer survival rates than people who take too much acetaminophen in a suicide attempt. And that's because they don't realize they're doing it. It goes on for too long. They miss the window where they can take the antidote and potentially be saved. I don't want to get macabre about this, but I, I'm assuming you'd have to take an awful lot of this stuff if you wanted to kill yourself. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. But to overdose, it really isn't that difficult. Like the example I gave earlier, mm -hmm. Any, anybody who's not very aware could easily overdose on a But that's accidental. If you right. wanted to, like if you combined it the way you suggested earlier, that would presumably be unintentional and accidental. Mm -hmm. But if you, if, if, if you just wanted to kill yourself with acetaminophen, you're talking about a whole bottle, I presume, or something, aren't you? You would probably have to take a lot. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that's interesting about acetaminophen is that the margin of safety is relatively narrow. The difference between the safe amount and what might be harmful is is relatively thin. Um, so, you know, people have been shown to overdose on acetaminophen by just going a couple of pills over the daily recommended hmm. limit. Jennifer, if this is as clearly concerning as it is, mm -hmm. how come we don't know about this? It's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, I think because acetaminophen and Tylenol has been around for so, so long, it's a really old drug. And there are some drug safety experts who think that if it were introduced today, it probably would be a prescription. Uh, painkiller. Um, but I think just because it is so common, and that's worth noting, more than 4 billion doses in Canada are taken every year, and the vast majority of those are taken safely. Um, and it does have a reputation for safety, so I think people have kind of been lulled into a state of complacency. Um, but it is interesting. I mean, this new report that we wrote about in the Star recently found an average of 68 Canadians dying every year from acetaminophen. If you can imagine a new drug coming onto the market in a year in, they found 68 people had died from it, whether intentionally or half of them unintentionally. I think that would cause a bit of an uproar. So it's, it's really interesting the way people are sort of um, regarding this drug and sort mm -hmm. of underestimating its risks. And you said it before, but let's state it again. Eight per day is the limit. Eight extra strength. Extra strength yeah. Tylenol, for exactly. example. Exactly. So is four the limit. grams of acetaminophen is currently the recommended daily limit. But you know, Health Canada and, and scientists studying this drug actually aren't totally even sure what the daily safe limit is. There is discussion happening at Health Canada right now whether or not to lower that daily limit. In the US, that discussion is happening as well. 
Some people, there have been cases where people have experienced liver toxicity or injury at doses below four grams a day. Hmm. So it's not sort of a cut and dry limit. Right. Any idea when they're going to be ready to make a concrete recommendation on that one way or another? Well, Health Canada has been kind of looking into this since 2008. Uh, and in 2009, they came up with some stricter guidelines on labels that was hopefully going to make the way people were using this drug safer. Um, they've come out with another report last year, and they are now sort of holding recommend consultations and taking in consultations from the public to see what further actions they need to be taking. Um, a lot of it has to do with changes on the label, but certainly drug safety experts are recommending they go even further. Health Canada's own experts who were appointed to sort of look into this issue are recommending pretty substantial changes, including decreasing the daily limit, decreasing the dose per pill, even taking extra strength and putting it into prescription, hmm. and removing uh, acetaminophen from codeine products. So Tylenol-3, for instance, taking acetaminophen out of that. This has been recommended to Health Canada. Uh, we don't really know yet whether they'll take these recommendations. They're talking about it as we speak. Gotcha. Let's compare this to another painkiller that's mm -hmm. also fairly common out there, codeine. Right. How are they similar? How are they different? Well, codeine is an opiate. You know, it's uh, addictive as well. Um, and it's been combined with acetaminophen in these products that people commonly know as Tylenol-1, Tylenol-2, Tylenol-3, Tylenol-4. And the argument is that in combination they will work better as a painkiller. Tylenol-1 only has 8 milligrams of codeine. It's barely anything. Um, and you can buy it without a prescription. Anyone can walk up to a pharmacy and ask the pharmacist for some of this drug and they will most likely sell it to them. They're supposed to ask some questions and do some vetting, but in, pra in practice, this isn't really happening. Mm -hmm. So this drug is out there. Um, people are using it. There's no paper trail. We don't know how many Canadians are taking this drug. Because is it addictive? It's, and it's addictive because Tylenol of the codeine. One. Yeah, because there's codeine in it. Even with that little amount of codeine. Well, over time, you can certainly get addicted. And especially if you're taking many pills at a time, I also wrote a story about this where people are purposefully, purposely abusing Tylenol-1. They're pharmacy shopping, so to speak, going from pharmacy to pharmacy to pharmacy, buying this drug, extracting the codeine, and using it to get high. And the, more, sort of the thing that really elevates the danger with Tylenol-1 is the fact that it is mixed in with acetaminophen. So they may get hooked on the codeine, but then they're getting damaged by the acetaminophen, hmm. which is hurting their liver, and maybe they're not even aware. You say extracting the coating. There are ways to do that. I was going to ask, do you know how to do it? There, you know, like anything, there are all these YouTube and internet tutorials, and they're out there. I'm obviously not going to plug them, but <laughs> this person I interviewed, he did it for more than a decade. Landed himself in the hospital, lost relationships. He's now on methadone. Hmm. And in fact, my story that I wrote earlier this year, I think it was in February, we looked into the stats, and in the previous three years, 500 people had signed up for methadone programs to try and kick a non-prescription codeine habit. So that's hmm. Tylenol-1 and its generic versions. The, uh, in the interim time in which your story has appeared, mm -hmm. I wonder if you've heard from any of the pharma companies and how they've reacted to, particularly, uh, the report you put out there saying 68 people a year die from acetaminophen. Mm -hmm. Well, the common criticisms that we hear from people when we put out these stories is that one, so many people take this drug safely, and that has to be acknowledged, it's true. It is very safe when taken responsibly. Um, but I don't think we should ignore it just because so many people are taking it safely, um, because at the end of the day, an average of 68 Canadians a year are dying from this drug, whether by taking it intentionally or not. Another criticism is that there's a fear that by scaring people off acetaminophen, which is very, very safe when you take it responsibly, people will be pushed towards other painkillers. Um, some of which have their own sort of suite of adverse events, mm -hmm. like ibuprofen and aspirin we know might cause stomach bleeding even within the recommended dose. So some doctors really prefer Tylenol over, say, Advil, um, and, and they have concerns about that. So we've heard from that sort of point of view, is that there's a risk of pushing people away from Tylenol, but you know the underlying problem here really is there aren't very good painkiller options for people who suffer from pain and chronic pain, and that's mm -hmm. a lot of Canadians. And what they've got out there are acetaminophen, ibuprofen, Advil, and then you've got the harder stuff, which can be addictive, which, as we know, leads to all sorts of problems. So they really need more options. I think that's sort of a message to take home at the end of the day. Anybody working on those more options? Oh, yeah. People are certainly working on it, but it's yeah. difficult. <laughs> uh, I, can I presume that if one of the results of all of this mm -hmm. is that the recommended allowance or dosage of acetaminophen is lowered, 
and therefore people use less of it. Mm -hmm. The drug companies are not going to be happy about that, I presume. Is that right? They'll sell less. I think so. I mean, well, Tylenol is certainly a blockbuster brand uh, for McNeil, which is a division of Johnson & Johnson. And extra strength Tylenol, which as I mentioned, Health Canada's own experts wants to make prescription, makes up for the majority of Tylenol sales, apparently, is what we've heard from some sources. So certainly it's hurting their bottom line. And from what we understand, pharmaceutical companies and associations you know, are not happy about some of the recommendations, recommendations and certainly pushing back on some of them as well. Uh, final question, an obvious final question. Mm -hmm. When you've got a headache, what do you do? I take Tylenol, I really do, but I am very careful now about how much I take. I definitely used to be one of those people who would take two, three, and you know maybe an hour later I'd take another Tylenol, and then maybe I'd go out for beers that night. And now I'm, I understand that this is really unsafe behavior and I'm very mindful of it. All my friends around me, all my colleagues too, have become extra careful with the stuff. Because you know that you kind of see it everywhere. It's in the drugstore next to the candy. People have mm -hmm. really sort of lost sight of the fact that this is a drug, it can be a poison, and you have to take it really responsibly. So smarter awareness, more responsible behavior will be a positive development from all of the work you've done. Hopefully. And really, it should be emphasized that, yeah, half of the work is on us to be more aware, to be educated, to read the labels, and not, take, not treat every problem as if there's a pill for it to be solved with. Gotcha. Yeah. Jennifer Yang, health reporter, Toronto Star. That's Thanks me. for visiting us at TVO tonight. Thanks for having me. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.